So you may have just picked up your Android phone and you might be trying to figure out some of the best developer options to basically enable inside of your phone. Now you enable you know, your developer options by clicking on your build number multiple times. So once you actually have your developer options basically on and enabled, there's several different options I'd probably recommend you to go ahead and enable as soon as you go and get into it. Now I'm assuming you don't care about your battery life too much. If you do, then some of these you don't have to enable and I'll let you know which ones probably take up the most amount of battery life. Now the very, very first couple of ones I'd recommend installing or just enabling are OEM unlocking. This one basically allows you to unlock the bootloader or have your bootloader to be unlocked. So if you don't care about it, then you don't have to do enable it. This basically allows you to go and unlock the bootloader, like load or root your phone in the future, things like that. It does tell you device protection features will not work and this device setting will be turned on. So it does kind of maybe, you know, allow your phone to be a little bit less secure. So keep that in mind. But if you like unlocking your bootloader, I would 1 million percent recommend enabling that. Now this automatic system updates option is really cool too. If you just want to keep your iPhone, if you just want to keep your Android phone up to date for a majority of the updates that it has for it, that's another really cool feature I'd basically enable as well. It just keeps your phone up to date and it just automatically enables your phone and your you know, software updates in the future. Now USB debugging is the GOAT. It is one of the most popular features and the reason why people enable developer options. Now within USB debugging, what this allows you to do is it basically allows you to go ahead and copy data from your computer and your device, install applications without notifications and read log data. It's just the easier way of basically going through and you know managing your phone from your computer. It's a really, really cool thing. And I know a lot of people who enable USB debugging and it is by far one of the most important things I'd probably recommend. You can also enable wireless debugging as well. I think you have to enable this if you want to manage your phone wirelessly from your computer from your phone. So you can go through and enable that as well, which is actually a very, very cool thing. Now these other ones are just reports and different things like that. I usually don't mess with these too much. Now another one that I do enable is right here, which is the forced peak refresh rate. What this allows is it basically will go through and make your phone kind of refresh at a higher rate and it improves touch responsiveness and animation quality, but it increases battery usage. So if you care about battery life, like I mentioned earlier, some of these will require more battery. If you go ahead and basically have this on, it will go through and basically just, you know, it'll decrease your battery life a little bit, but it will go through and just allow so much better animation quality from your phone if you're going to go ahead and enable it. So I'd probably enable that too. That's just another really cool one that I typically keep on. Now this Wi-Fi scan throttling is another really cool one as well. And what this does is it reduces your battery drain and it improves your network performance. So it's kind of cool. It's like a two in one. It's a really cool one. I think it stops it from like constantly looking at different types of Wi-Fi's that are around you. So that is a really, really cool one that I recommend, you know, enabling as well. Also this tethering hardware acceleration it says use tethering hardware acceleration if available. This means that if you're tethering your phone to other, you know, devices, it will go ahead and kind of make it as fast as possible rather than going through and being a little bit slower. Now, another one I see a lot of people enable as well is this disable absolute volume. What this one does is it basically disables the Bluetooth absolute volume feature in case of volume issues with remote devices, such as unacceptably like a lot of volume and of lack of control. This is something that some people do. It, it, like, I think it increases the overall volume of your device if you want to. So you can go through and enable this and kind of get a better experience within your particular sound and quality as well. Now, all these are basically from the so on and so forth. These are all Bluetooth options if you want to enable. If they sound good to you, I'm not too familiar with them, so I don't really mess around with those ones too much. Then you get into like NFC stuff. Now, this one is really cool. If you want to show taps, I know some people who like having the taps available on your phone. If you enable this, you'll basically show the taps that are kind of going on with your device. It's very, very subtle. But I will say if you're somebody who's like making tutorials on their phone or something like that, this is a really nice feature to have because you can screen record on your phone and you can just show the tap. So instead of just talking about it, you can tap on it and people can kind of see exactly what you're tapping on, which I actually think is really cool. So you can enable that one if you're really into that kind of stuff. On top of that, you can also have a transparent navigation bar. This is more of a like a you know thing at the very top, but you can have a transparent navigation bar all throughout, which can be kind of cool depending on what you're looking at, depending on what you're doing. It can be cool. Me personally, it doesn't really matter that much, but it is kind of a nice thing if you want to. You can just enable it and your navigation bar will then be transparent, which depending on how you have it you know, set up, it's a really nice thing. 
Again, all these other things, you really aren't really going to be messing around too much. I don't really mess around with these two things at, like, at all. Force desktop mode was one that I used to use or that I used to have on. I don't really mess with that anymore. So I don't even really do that anymore, to be honest. And those are kind of the main Bluetooth. And those are kind of the main developer options I'd probably recommend enabling. There's so many here, as you can see, but those are probably the main ones I'd probably recommend enabling or turning on as soon as you go and buy your phone. Again, there's so many there. There's probably some other ones, you know, and if you have any that I haven't hit on, I would highly recommend leaving those linked down in the description too, or just like talk about them because I'd love to add them in my next video. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, soldier.